Hello, welcome everybody to Jet Streamers. <laughs> and uh, this is episode five of Jet Streamers. We are going to be flying from the capital of Kosovo, which I definitely didn't learn when we moved there <laughs> the first time, but we're going from the capital of Kosovo, Pristina, all the way to Mykonos in Greece uh, <laughs> with somebody who you'd be shocked to find hasn't actually ever been there. Uh, it's, I am stunned. <laughs> That this hasn't <laughs> happened already. Um, please yeah, let me know if all the audio and everything's okay. Sorry? This is my first time, yeah. First, yeah. So, welcome on board. It is, no, it's not October the 26th. It is November the 17th. This is how well uh, prepared I am. Uh, and today we're flying here yeah, from Pristina, the capital of Kosovo, to the gay paradise of Mykonos. Our co-pilot today is the one and only Justin Nick, who is a variety <laughs> streamer originally from Canada, but now living in the US of A. And he's also a founder of the Rainbow Arcade Dream Team. So in just a few moments, we'll dim the lights and get ready for takeoff. Please be aware, poppers are not allowed on board. And for hygiene reasons, we'll be keeping the door bathroom, uh, uh, the bathroom door locked. <laughs> not after last time. So oh, <laughs> welcome, welcome, Justin. Thank you so much for agreeing to, uh, you know, to take part in this. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited for this flight. You know, nothing brings me more joy than uh, Biggest Venice Airlines. You know, I'm a, I'm a Biggest Venice Airlines card holder. You've never seen this before, have you? Because, yeah, uh, <laughs> we've had, we've bounced along every runway we've met. I think, yeah, I'm I'm banned from about three countries now for just destroying these runways. Uh, going at a good 45 degree angle. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. There's a lot, they, they, like the, the roof of the cabin is completely wiped clean. Uh, I can hit mountains. I nearly, I nearly did hit mount a mountain. Um, <laughs> and also, I've got to say, thanks to, thanks very much to not just, not just the last patch, but the patch before Flight Simulator, um, autopilot is broken. So that, <laughs> oh, such no. fantastic news. Yeah. yeah, that what could go wrong? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Well, just again, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Uh, you know, it's it's a wonderful time. Well, not quite a wonderful time yet. It'll be wonderful time in the U.S. on January 20th. But, you know, things are looking <laughs> up. So it's been good the last couple of days. <laughs> yeah. I love that um, they announced the vaccine like two days after the election. And they're just uh -huh. how angry must they be feeling in there? <laughs> that uh, there is uh, this <laughs> hope on the horizon, but it was announced just a couple of days too late for them. Yeah. <laughs> what a pity. What a pity. Um. <laughs> So I mean, let, let's go right to the beginning of then you streaming because obviously you're uh, before you started streaming, you were uh, you were very big on Instagram and stuff. But why did you decide one day that you wanted to stream? Well, I, I think for me, I I've always played video games like since I was young. I, I mean, I remember having like Pokemon Blue and, you know, like an N64 and playing that with my family, you know, especially like Mario Kart 64 and then Final Fantasy 9 hit and it was like. I fell in love with games as soon as like I played Final Fantasy IX. So I've been playing games forever. Uh, and then had been on Instagram for a long time, doing the social media thing for a long time. But then uh, I, I really love Final Fantasy XIV. I've played it for like five years. And the first streamer that I ever watched was Spofy. Oh. Uh, he was a member of the Rainbow Arcade, actually. And this was before I even knew what Twitch was, really. But I was watching Spofy because I was like, oh, I love Final Fantasy XIV. I want to see how like the you know this person plays the game and any tips or tricks etc and then you know i watched spoofy for a long time and i was like i kind of want to give this a try and that's sort of like what led me to start streaming actually so i have to give a huge thanks to spoofy <laughs> were you so were you a final fantasy 14 streamer at the beginning i i was kind of i i don't think i necessarily like branded myself as like a final fantasy 14 streamer but i pretty much i think my first stream was final fantasy 14 actually and I, I did that for a long time and let me tell you if i could if i didn't have to delete those vods if i could or those <laughs> clips i could go back and watch it was probably a mess yeah but yeah it was definitely final fantasy 14 that that was the first game i streamed wow have you done it recently i feel like i've seen you stream final fantasy 14 before but maybe not in a while yeah it's it's been a little bit i I'm really bad at like multitasking with Final Fantasy 14, especially because like a lot of the stuff I do in 14 is mostly like savage rating, for example. So I tend to shy away from it because I'm so focused. I don't feel like I'm entertaining. Like I, I watch other MMO streamers who can like 
do all the things at once and still like keep up with chat. And I was like, that's not me. <laughs> so usually all I do if with like, if I do stream final fantasy 14, it's like on a big patch day or a big expansion day or, yeah. or something like that typically. That latest expansion is just, Oh my gosh. It's so good. I'm currently with, uh, I'm playing a bit with uh, Ed Knights who, you know, is the yeah. friend of rainbow arcade. And um, I keep saying to him, he's like, it's, it's a little bit boring at the moment. Like, just, just wait, just wait till you get to yeah. shadow bringers. Oh my gosh, it completely changes. Like once you get to Shadowbringers, it's so good. Yeah. All right, I've, I've turned on autopilot so we can, we can relax, we can chill. <laughs> I, I've got to say though, Spofi is, yeah, she, Spofi influenced me as well. She, um, like the 100 days of stream, I was like, if Spofi can stream for what, 1300 or so <laughs> days in a row, I can do 100 days before my birthday. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ed, I can't even imagine it. Like, I want to do it as well at some point, but I just like, when I think about it, I'm like, oh gosh, how? Like, yeah. how? <laughs> there were so many things that kind of just aligned at the right time that it was perfect. But uh, yeah. now I've like committed to do that every year now <laughs> before my birthday. So that'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. Ed, by the way, says, it's so boring. <laughs> I've not trusted both Ed. of you. Yeah. Not this Ed. Trust me, Ed. Trust <laughs> me. <laughs> um, so what? why do you enjoy streaming so obviously you started it what makes you uh stick around and keep streaming yeah. i i think for me it's the it's always like sort of shadowed with like my experience on other social media platforms is why i appreciate twitch so much because i i think my partner and i started on instagram and like when it was fairly new like back in 2012 and to sort of see its evolution and to you know, realize it's very like two dimensional uh, and you don't really get to like be yourself or, you know, you are yourself, but it's like a very like, it's like a 15 minute snapshot into that, right? And, you know, you get a very two dimensional idea of who I am and what I stand for. And with Twitch, I I sort of found, not, not necessarily like I always knew what my voice was, but I sort of found like a space where I could be myself and and express myself and not feel awkward about it and there would be people there who are who are sort of rallying around that community so you know i the thing i really love about twitch is really sort of it's afforded me this opportunity to just like be my goofy self and then you know this beautiful community sort of i, I we all i think every streamer agrees you know the community <laughs> that build up around it are just so amazing and and it, it it what makes it so great for me is being able to hang out with people I consider friends, you know, like every time I hit the go live button. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. And uh, yeah, I feel like, yeah, with Instagram, whereas when you're with Twitch, it's a bit like a reality TV. You see the real person, you see them yeah. when they're, you know, needing a drink or they're just going like just the, the really boring things that no, in a million years, you're never going to put a picture of it on Instagram. Although <laughs> I know some people I follow do, but like they're <laughs> like, you're, it's real. It's kind of like raw, unedited footage. It's you. It's exactly. There exactly <laughs> um all right what how did you find it at the very start so you started streaming Final fantasy 14 how how did you find it oh my gosh if i could go back and and like watch this i, I don't I ever want to do that with mine i like, never <laughs> <laughs> i was so nervous i remember being so nervous i i could i remember feeling like remembering sort of like the quiver in my voice about like going live and then I'm sure I wasn't entertaining at all like because I was like I said I was playing Final Fantasy 14 mm. and I was doing a savage raid with friends and I'm sure I was like not I was not interacting with chat at all like you know it was it and it, it too on top of that it's like a huge learning curve right like mm. you know I'm not very technologically savvy myself so having to set like OBS up and and all the you know, the gadgets and gizmos, I was like, just praying, praying mm. that I got everything right. <laughs> oh, yeah, OBS can be a real, real, real pain. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember setting up a scene and then setting up maybe like a hundred different sources on that of various sound clips and effects and all that stuff. And then one day I went to delete an effect and accident accidentally deleted the entire scene. <laughs> There's no backups on <laughs> OBS. <gasps> yeah, oh my gaze gosh, and tech, yeah. always. <laughs> audio issues to this day it doesn't matter how long you stream but audio yeah. issues always gonna be the plague so <laughs> yeah absolutely no yeah to today like the reason why i don't have my like i've got my green screen behind me and not normally in the box is because today my cam link just decided not to do it yeah this is the sixth time i've done a, yeah maybe seventh or so time that i've done a uh, a stream from 
from this and today no decided they just didn't want to use my uh, camera on there <laughs> that's great um what have you learned along the way uh you know that you wish you'd known at the start so if you do go back and look at yourself if you could speak to yourself what would you have said yeah i think uh i i i honestly think it's something that i've learned from others as i went and it's to you know even in like you know we just talked about how instagram it's very easy to be two-dimensional and sort of fit into like a cookie cutter of like what social media is mm -hmm. and i think i probably tried to do that at the start you know you look at streamers and you aspire to 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 succeed and do like other streamers do and you have your inspirations etc and i think i tried in the beginning especially to sort of fit into this mold where i saw other streamers sort of like succeeding and i was like what do i have to emulate that to to do well um and i quickly realized that like that's n not the way to do it because you know it one it goes like sort of went against like what i was trying to to leave behind with instagram right and then mm -hmm. two it just didn't feel authentic. You know, I was trying to sort of force myself to do things like, for example, like the Final Fantasy 14 streams, for example, like I love Final Fantasy 14, but it was sort of like this learning journey to be like, here are the games I enjoy playing. Here are the moments I enjoy having on stream. Here's like the voice I enjoy having. And it makes me feel comfortable and also makes me feel like I'm being myself 100%. Uh, it was sort of like a journey to get to that point to to realize that like you don't have to emulate like the big streamers or you don't have to play xyz game you can just be yourself and people will come and that's more important than like trying to to fit into this mold so yeah i think for me it was really just like this learning experience of like learning to say no and to just be like i'm gonna do what i want to do and i it, like if i don't enjoy it i'm not gonna do it anymore yeah <laughs> No, I think that makes it fun as well. Like if you if you're doing stuff because you feel like you have to, it just yeah. it's no longer fun. And and that's what's kind of impressive about you is that you can have a just chatting stream, or you can be playing a horror game, or you can be playing some goofy uh, dating simulator game, whatever, and you'll still have the same people there. So you, yeah. you do have like a core a core community. Like I, I've got a friend who built up an entire channel playing Fortnite, and then one uh -huh. day, and he he got partnered, and then one day he's like. Yeah, I'm a bit bored of Fortnite. I'm going to switch to uh, Valorant. And now the poor guy, he's like, he, he likes it because he's playing Valorant, but he's got 10 viewers because it's, yeah. it's a community. It's not really a community that is built up. And yeah, and that, I think that's so tough for streamers too because, yeah. you know, I see like, I, I still feel, you know, I think that the, another takeaway for me is that like, no matter how long you're doing streaming, you're always thinking about like what, like if you're at 100 viewers, you're like, what do I need to do to like attract more people? And I think that's like a constant struggle and it sort of goes yep. into the whole, like, <laughs> what game should I be playing? Like what games are popular and should I be doing X, Y, Z thing? And I think no matter how long or if you've even like, you know, figured out sort of your place, I think we all sort of battle with those insecurities. And, and you know, uh, I remember when I first got partnered um, like the, there was like a sort of like a market drop in my viewership right after getting partnered. Can hundred percent relate to this. Yeah. Yeah. I felt so bad. Like I felt like a fraud almost. And I was like, you know, and I think that doesn't like ever really go away for streamers because we yeah. sort of like put our heart on the table. Right. But it, it's like tricky to sort of navigate those emotions and, and, you know, want to feel like you're doing the right things to make it entertaining for individuals so it's it's a it's a journey that will probably continue forever <laughs> yeah 100 percent. yeah especially like if i if i'm doing a stream that may be something a bit different to normal and my average viewers at the end is lower than 75 i would get like super imposter syndrome i was actually I, they partnered me because i had an over higher average than 75 and now i'm, I'm doing less and yeah i know and it's like it, it is it's like that imposter syndrome that sort of just like rears its ugly head i mean obviously ben you like 100 percent deserve that check mark and people who like work that hard obviously oh. deserve it but i remember myself also feeling like when that drop happened i was like oh god yeah. <laughs> doing awful <laughs> it, i gotta say it does feel really good to know that it happens to other people as well because it was yeah. just near the end of the 100 days of stream when i was like building up and then it kind of just went to a normal schedule and and yeah you see a big a big drop but there i mean I, i'm sure you agree like so lucky to actually get that uh mm -hmm. to get the opportunity to to be offered that that it's oh absolutely absolutely definitely something i will never take for granted um but yeah as canadian bug girl said in the chat Gemma, she says variety streamers are streaming on hard mode yeah <laughs> 100%. oh exactly. oh yeah yeah oh, absolutely because you know and and i think that's another thing like variety streamers often compare ourselves to people who have like a main game that they stream 
Mm-hmm. And I know I do it too. And, you know, like, you benefit from sort of having that community that's built up around the game and you. And when you're variety streaming, you know, you could one day play a game that some people don't enjoy. And that's just, that's part of it. Like not everybody enjoys the same type of games Yeah. and it can just, it, it can feel like a personal hit, even though it not, it shouldn't necessarily, <laughs> but it does. It always feel, you know, because you, yeah. like, like I said, you put your heart and soul into streaming. So it does feel personal. Sometimes. Yeah. I mean, sometimes they'll come into chat and be like, Oh, I'm not inter- interested in this game. See you later. Like, okay. <laughs> you don't need to say that i'm already emotional (laughs) yeah i'm already like worried about whether i should be streaming this or not (laughs) you're like this is boring bye (laughs) like cheers thanks for that (laughs) help helps the imposter syndrome Um, (laughs) how would you what advice would you give them for somebody starting out so you know what worked for you if somebody was to say you know I'm, i'm starting out on twitch how do i build a community how do i grow i mean they're two different ones that maybe work together but what would you suggest yeah i think for me it's like if i could have learned it sooner to just do it for having you know to not i've always had fun streaming but to not feel like i needed to fit into a mold like do that as soon as you can and like recognize your worth as soon as you can because people are gonna like fall in love with you for who you are um and my other thing too is if i could go back and like tell myself and it's something that i always love telling newer streamers as well that if you have like above three or four average viewers, I think you're already in like the top one or 2% of streamers on Twitch because the wide majority of streamers stream to like one or two people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I could go back and sort of like have these moments where I like centered myself and reminded myself that like, this is like my journey and my journey alone. Like I don't need to compare myself. I don't need to feel like I'm, I'm fighting for metrics. It's so hard. You know, everybody wants to be successful and do the right thing, but um doing that and then the the other thing too is not to over overwhelm yourself with the different forms of social media that sort of integrate into it mm-hmm. i think i got really burnt out in my first year and a half of streaming because i was like i saw so many people who were like doing clips on twitter and tiktok and youtube videos and xyz things and and you know being so active all the time and you know, like I was also, you know, I, I working a job and I didn't have that much time, but I always felt like I was, you know, falling short because I wasn't doing it. So the other thing too, is, you know, making, I, I, I would always recommend to people like do what you can and then leave it at that. And if you don't like a certain social media platform, don't worry about it. You don't need to compare yourself in that way. And the other thing too, is if you are going to do those things and, and it is, it is a boon to like your, your stream to do those things, but work. And I think Jude said it, mermaid queen Jude said this as well, like work smarter, not harder, uh, especially with regard to like social media. Like if you make a clip and it's made for Twitter, like post it on TikTok too. You don't need to do extra work. Like I, I just, I think my thing is like, I got so burnt out trying to do all the like X, Y, Z, like here's the cookie cutter steps of like success on Twitch and, it's, it really is different for everybody. Nobody ever feels like it's different for everybody, but it really is. So like, just embrace your own journey. Yeah, I mean, I t- totally agree with there as well. By the way, um, we just asked, do we have any drinks on board? Yeah, we do. Uh, would you, what would you like? What tipple would you like? Um, I, I don't I, like what, whatever's going to get me to Lindsay Lohan, uh, Mykonos, tequila. Dan, she takes her hair, you know? <laughs> te- like, tequila. Whatever- there is that what it is get sure. the tequila yeah just straight tequila thank you straight tequila yeah the darker the better <laughs> we are currently by the way flying over i'm definitely not googling it because i totally forgot uh we are currently flying over uh north macedonia so there you go oh love, love that macedonia. beautiful beautiful is north macedonia i've never been to north macedonia um <laughs> i uh we were playing the we were going through some eurovision videos on stream of a few like a bunch of oh us God, and we missed eurovision oh, and one of the things was we didn't quite know where north macedonia was so we asked alexa on stream there's a yeah there is a clip unfortunately it got deleted but it's been backed <laughs> up i will find it uh, and it's we asked alexa where north macedonia was and she said north macedonia is in the northern part of macedonia <laughs> <laughs> thank you really cheers thanks alexa yeah <laughs> oh. <laughs> was brilliant brilliant uh but no i totally agree with you as well like when it comes to somebody like your people want to get big on twitch as well but the number one place to not advertise but to get that growth is on twitch obviously on twitter and tiktok will help you and stuff but i find that yep. being in other communities 
obviously not make it like today we had somebody popping in telling them, great they were starting their stream in 30 minutes wonderfully don't do that Gosh. but like uh, yeah today i think it's a full moon today i had three three trolls which was uh, oh, no. a lot higher than normal but yeah <laughs> it's actually quite surprisingly lately but what yeah one of the things is if you're going to be if you want to grow you can grow on twitch and twitch alone like just by yeah. hanging Absolutely. out for example yeah. we know swezzle our friend swezzle who is yeah. He has been a viewer in both of our communities absolutely for so long and really active and then he made the transition over to streaming and he's doing so so well like yep it's... oh absolutely and that, like that just like like you said it just like attests to like just creating like real connections to people yeah and you can do that just on twitch like you don't need to do that on other platforms so like if you're not like, you know, like you might not be ready to take the dive into all those different things of social media and that's okay. Mm. Um, so yeah, like, yeah, Swizzle's been great. I remember, I can't say the name of the Pokemon he traded to me, but <laughs> that's how we met, so. That's how you, oh, really? <laughs> I can't say it. I don't want to say it on <laughs> no, you can You can say it, don't worry. I'll, um, no, you know, um, we have the explicit tag on. There's the Gudra Pokemon, and Gudra is like dripping. You know, it's like oh, a no. dragon type Pokemon that's a little drippy. And uh, Swizzle, before he traded it to me, named it Cummies. <laughs> um, so it just said, Swizzle is trading you Cummies. And that's, that was like my first interaction with Swizzle. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Your first day in, yeah, and then you just knew, I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, and he was in my party for a really long time let me just say you kept cummies for a while did you <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh dear can't imagine the smell can't imagine <laughs> oh, God. get cummies get partner exactly exactly oh god oh. and so in wrapping up the like the streaming part what do you like best about streaming what's your favorite bit it's definitely it's definitely the community like i i think i talked about it on on another podcast and and you know i i think it's the community and like the friends that i've made especially like it's been it's always been like that but like i think 2020 highlighted it even more mm. because you know i like most of us we've been inside for months now and being able to like hang out and just like be with people even if it's like in you know not be be like physically next to someone but to like be able to hang out with you know your friends has been has been truly amazing and i i think that that's what i really love about it and then two i think uh, sort of taking like another view at it as well i i twitch is having like a lot of issues right now and there's a lot of things going on and i think we're calling out a lot of ways that like twitch is sort of failing uh creators mm -hmm. but what I will say about Twitch is something that I've noticed over my three years streaming is that Twitch does give creators a voice and Twitch sort of becomes this bridge then to wider industries like the gaming industry or the tech industry. And I think we're starting to see that that shift where those industries are listening to communities. So I, I think it's really putting pressure on industries to get representation right because creators who consume these games and who are passionate about these games have an opportunity to be like you're getting this wrong for example you know the whole thing with the dead naming in the last of us part two mm. or they can say you're getting it right like you know if it with tell me why and and games like that and i think it's important that you know that bridge is being created and i think you know in addition to loving my community i also love sort of that Twitch gives folks a voice to to sort of have and and make space for these changes and let game the game industry know that like we sort of demand better. Yeah. No, I totally yeah. That is I never even thought of it like like that, but that is that is totally true. Just go on Twitter and it's not just the ones that will be kind of shouting for Call of Duty or get rid of skill based matchmaking and all that those kind of ones. But there are yeah, there are so many people uh, tweeting out there getting thousands tens of thousands of likes and retweets and commentary on for example the um the poster in cyberpunk that was exactly. there yep. the uproar that, that came and oof, they've changed it or they've removed exactly. it um it, it i just works. think that i just love that like i think that that's like one of the the most amazing things because i've seen it become more prominent over the three years i've been on on twitch and i i sort of love that it's going in that direction Mm. another one yeah, the representation in spider-man oh i need exactly. to get a new spider-man yep yeah i need to play that new spider-man thursday 
I'm so annoyed. You've got you got your PS5, haven't you? I did, yeah. <laughs> and why do we have to wait an extra week? It's been killing me. I've refused to watch anybody streaming anything that could potentially be on a PS5 because I'm just... Oh, oh God. Me. Okay, now, going on to like Rainbow Arcade, obviously. Obviously, a lot yeah. of people know you and have met me through Rainbow Arcade because it's such a wonderful community. What made you want to start a stream team? Yeah, so I think the the thing for for me was when I first back in 2017 when I first started streaming, I wanted to find I the LGBTQI plus tag had had existed, but it was fairly new. Um, it was like after communities ended, they created the LGBTQI plus tag, and I was looking for like a I wanted like this synthesized space where like there would be like a list of of like vetted LGBTQI plus streamers who. I knew would be uplifting and it would be a safe space for everybody. And I felt like, you know, I could be involved and be me. Um, and I had looked for teams that were LGBTQIA plus, and I didn't find any, I think there was one that I did find at the time back in 2017, but it hadn't been utilized. There was no information on it there. I think it's sort of maybe like existed and then it just sort of fell out of, of, you know, nobody was like actively, um, up, you know, promoting it or anything like that. So back in 2017, and when I when I found out how teams worked, I was like, if I ever get partnered, like I would love to create a, a team of LGBTQI plus individuals because there's, and the other thing too, is there's like a lot of LGBT plus friendly teams, like yeah. they're extremely inclusive, but I wanted like a place where there would be like vetted members of the LGBTQI plus community. And it didn't have to be like a huge thing, like Twitch kittens. It could just be like streamers who use their platform not just for games but also for being you know out and proud about who they are and and you know striving for better representation and live streaming and gaming etc so the idea came probably back in like 2017 late 2017 after like a year i had been been starting it and then um i got partnered uh, i think two years ago now and after that i was like i i'm gonna do this like let's do this and I, you know john john's been a really good friend for a long time and I, I also knew that like, you know, uh, you know, having interacted with other team leaders that it's not easy running a team either. It's like deceptively difficult. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to go into it myself either. And, you know, I, I talked to, to JJ, who's like a really amazing friend and was like, let's do this together. Like, let's like co-found this and let's like work together to make sure that like we're doing this right. And that, you know, not only are we getting, you know, doing the work for representation and live streaming, but that we're also making sure everybody on the team feels like they're supported. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of how that all started. Yeah. And it did. And you, was it, was Cody involved as well from the very start? Yes. Cody, Cody worked really closely with us as well. And Cody did a lot of like, um, I mean, I can't, I can't even imagine the hours Cody's put into like, the videos and and making yeah. sure that like everything like cody did all of the intro videos most of like our our special videos and he does like all the background production for like special things so yeah there's no <laughs> like, you can't dude, imagine yeah. the amount of stuff that cody does like when i was when we did the panel the other day and like, i was on the last panel right at the end i'm like <laughs> we have to have to thank cody because yeah i hope he had a very strong drink at the end of that or at least uh... and the thing is and i think even like urban bohemian brian pointed out like in a in a dm for like my panels group it was like i've been on brian was like i've been on like very professional like you know long term like have been around for years panels like panels and summits and he was mm. like this is run more smoothly than any of them <laughs> like cody's in the background just like absolutely doing amazing and yeah. Also, like with with Rude Animes and and a Quarter Ghost and Justice Kazzy did the front page and everything yeah. like that. I mean, it was really amazing. Oh, it was. I there was no. I was kind of nervous about doing it. A little bit nervous. Then Cody does like a thirty second countdown. I've never <laughs> been like <laughs> every oh, second yeah. he did. I was like, oh shit. I was. I didn't think I was so nervous. And then <laughs> now he's giving me a, a five second countdown and he's like, the last two are silent. And I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know what to do. Just totally panicked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> didn't realize i was i was yeah i was gonna be getting that um, <laughs> so there aren't many people out there who've started a stream team what do you what do you suggest you know for somebody that did want to start a stream team um you know they had an idea what would i think like it's deceptively there's deceptively a lot of work you know i i like it's it's never like I love doing the work, but I spend like a good chunk of my days like trying like doing stuff for Rainbow Arcade and then finding time to do my own stuff because 
you know, like, and I'm sure it's the same way for John, John, but like, for example, like I, when I wake up in the morning, I look at social media, we have like a, uh, a Twitter list of everybody who's on the team. And I see if anybody on the team is doing something, you know, that, that should be promoted or, you know, like with the rainbow arcade summit, it was like, you know, almost two months of working behind the scenes with like Sierra and Sierra X mist and cypher of tear to sort of develop that. So it's deceptively a lot of work, especially if you want your members to feel like they're being seen and supported. So I, I think my biggest advice would be like one, just like going into it, knowing that it's that, that, that much work and, yeah. you know, knowing that you can devote that much time. And then also like the other thing is like having like a trusted group of, you know, leaders who are willing to help you, you know, like it's impossible. It would be impossible for me or anyone to keep up with everything that's going on. So you know, we have a team like a, a leadership team of 11 people, and they all bring different skills to the table, whether it's like graphics design, video editing, you know, bad Andy Wrights did all of our graphics for Rainbow Arcade. Glenn has helped a ton with getting different things off the ground. And it would be impossible not to go in there and, and know that you need that, that support as well. What did you like maybe not expect from the team like something that kind of popped up and you never really thought about it when you were setting it up like yeah i think i think this the team it feels like it's been like four years since january 2020 oh my god yeah somebody in the chat when we talk about 2017 they're like god you remember 2017 go when was that <laughs> <laughs> i remember the, the team started back in january and you know i think the what's been what's been really interesting about like the rainbow arcade team is that like the team itself has like a mission beyond just like being a community of live streamers so sort of seeing how people react so kindly to the stream team has been has been like really amazing for for me to watch and i i think i always go back to like when we were inviting new members to the team and we rated winnie to let winnie know that they made the team and that's mm -hmm. wxnnie underscore is a new team member and when we raided winnie they started crying because they had made the team and the thing that they said was like the people on the team have done so much for me and i hope i can do that for someone else and i will be honest when i say i cried when i heard that because like that was like the goal right that mm -hmm. wasn't just about being a group of live streamers it was also about like standing up for something and and all of us sort of collectively coming together to be like, we are, you know, LGBTQI plus streamers, we demand a seat at the table in this space. And by us just being loud and proud and out, like it helps other streamers feel like they can do that as well. Yeah. And, you know, granted with that, with that in mind, there's a, a ton of amazing LGBTQI plus streamers who aren't on the Rainbow Arcade. And everybody who is putting in that work is making such an important and impactful difference. Yeah. And I think for me, that's just like something that's really been truly amazing to see. It is a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a pain as well that you can't accept everybody because it's so great that it's such a cozy community and we all know each other. We, you know, I see so many people in the chat as well who I recognize as being Rainbow Arcade members, but there are also yeah. so many wonderful others that haven't uh, yet, you know, joined. It's <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, if they're determined, it's a, it's a matter of time, I'm sure. Just, uh, exactly. but it's, yeah, you know, I really... It's uh, it's a great thing to be part of, and seeing those raids was just incredible. Rude Annie Mays, who I've known for years now. How long? Let me click. How long has Annie been following? Since uh, February. Okay, so like, I feel like I know you longer than that, Annie. Maybe I've been following you longer, but like, yeah, Annie, I feel like I've known for ages. But when, yeah, it does feel like years. It just feels like years. <laughs> well, actually, to be honest, February could have been a few years ago. Um, but like seeing Nanny join the team and Liam, for example, Liam was crying as well. Uh, hey, oh, Liam. It's just, yeah, it was, yeah. it was amazing seeing friends, seeing friends join. And also new people, like for example, Cypher of Tear, Urban Bohemian. I yeah. didn't know them before they joined the team. And now I absolutely love their content. In fact, they, they influence me a lot in how I stream and how I approach things. Various. Absolutely. Yeah, it's brilliant. Um, okay, now... Ooh, where's my thing gone? Here we go. Um, what's in store for Rainbow Arcade in the future that you can talk about? Yeah. Uh, there's there's some really big things on the on the horizon that we I I'm unable to talk about right now, but there's some like really exciting changes coming, and I think something that's been nice to see. And granted, there's more work to do. I think 
most corporations, Twitch included, have more work to do. But I think Twitch recognizes, you know, some of their shortcomings with regard to diversity and inclusion, and they're taking steps to address this in ways that isn't simply performative. So, you know, like when I first started back in 2017, like like many companies, it's not like necessarily like a detriment to Twitch, but maybe just like the way it works in general. But, you know, it, you know, Black creators are celebrated during Black History Month and LGBT creators are celebrated during Pride Month and, you know, Lat Latinx creators are celebrated during Hispanic Heritage Month. And that was sort of where it ended. And I think Twitch is moving in a direction to, away from that. And uh, I'm excited that Rainbow Arcade is sort of involved in those discussions. And so there's a lot of those things coming on the horizon. And I think additionally, too, uh, you know, the the team has evolved in a really unique way that a, a lot of teams with missions beyond just live streaming have. So I think about like Black Girl Gamers who had their summit um, in June and then Rainbow Arcade just had our summit um, just like a week ago at this point. Yeah. Um, and I'm excited to see more content and more events and more things like that sort of build around identity and, mm -hmm. you know, how that relates to us as live streamers. And so I'm really excited to see those things sort of continue for Rainbow Arcade. And of course, sometime in the near future, like bringing on new members. I, I love, you know, that whole pro it's a very long process yeah. <laughs> as you know, <laughs> but like, it's, it's a very, like, you know, it's a very rewarding process and it's so amazing to see the applications and, and see what, what other LGBTQIA plus content creators are doing on the platform to, to push for more inclusivity. So I, I just am really excited. But we are flying over Thessaloniki. Oh, we're in Greece yeah. now. <laughs> we are in Greece. <laughs> Get your uh, get that second tequila shot. We are uh... ready to have my Lindsay Lohan moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, also, one question I've got to ask. I didn't put it on the on the doc, so I'm going to ask you. Uh, yeah. You know, a couple of other blue here and put you on the spot. When are I'm we ready. getting Rainbow Arcade merch? Because I I hear that so I'm, often from my own yeah, community. I, I want it so badly. I think right now, like the the confusing part is like, how do we like fit it in like for tax purpose wise? Okay. You know, because it's like such a weird thing, but. I, I think soon because we have so many like amazing graphics designers and, and people who are very well versed in like, um, you know, creating merch and and I I 100 percent it will happen no matter what. We just have to figure out exactly how to navigate it. Yeah. Rainbows, pastels. Yeah. Can we get a Justin miniature? <laughs> a Justin bobblehead. What are they called? The, uh... We can put it right in the front of the, right there in the cockpit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sarah's Rainbow Arcade polo shirts. I wouldn't dream of uh, giving you a polo shirt. Funko Pops, that's the word I was looking for, not bobbleheads. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> the ideas. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, let me reach out to their media team. The Steel Burn. <laughs> All right, well, let's go on to some games now. We talked about streaming and Rainbow Arcade. What yeah. was, so you said, obviously, the first game you streamed was Final Fantasy XIV, but I'm pretty sure that's not the first game you played. What, well, no, Final Fantasy IX, you said, was the one... Was that, that the first game you... love, that made me fall in love with okay. gaming i think the first game i vividly remember playing is pokemon blue oh. so like that first pokemon game because i remember having like a my my game boy i got it for christmas i remember getting pokemon blue and i remember just like playing it like non-stop and then like getting super into like the pokemon trading cards etc cetera, etc cetera, when i was in elementary school and we must be just... the same age because this is like identical yeah. yeah i think we are yeah, yeah. <laughs> But um, it was just, yeah, so that that's what got me into it. And then I, so I would, I guess my first console was like a, a, a like a first generation Game Boy. But then I remember my, my mom getting my little brother and I a Nintendo 64, which turned out to be disastrous for me because we were playing Mario Kart 64 and it was Rainbow Road and I kept falling off. And it was the first time I ever swore in front of my mother. <laughs> I said, shit. And she was Yes, <laughs> she, took, she took that console away so fast. Oh wow! <laughs> so angry about Rainbow Road. <laughs> she obviously didn't understand Rainbow Road because I mean, anybody that plays Rainbow Road, you swear. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. How could, did, have you seen the latest? In fact, yeah. Speaking of of uh, like Nintendo, did you see the latest Nintendo ad with the uh, the gay uncles? Yes, and I loved it so much. Oh. Like it was like so warming to my heart. And I also love, like, I think Brian Urban Bohemian and I were talking about like how like 
there's like some league of mommy bloggers, like a thousand moms or something mm-hmm. like that. How they're gonna be pissed all holiday season. Yeah. And that brings me joy. Oh, like, yeah. I love in that. the UK we have mums net, I think. And is it a million moms or something over in the US? Yeah, it's a million moms, oh. yeah. But I, I just it just doesn't it didn't feel realistic because they were how calm can you be playing Mario exactly. Kart? <laughs> Oh, exactly. Yeah, I've yeah. never once, you know, that was the only thing unrealistic about it is that like, that could be me. <laughs> I know. I play, I play Mario Kart quite often on like Friday evenings and um, like we have the family friendly tag when I used to have that, that was taken off there. Uh, a friend, Gary from Northern Ireland, he, he says things that, you know, like I've never even heard of before. Some of the filth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. By the way, Danny Danchan, thank you so much for the raid. We do have, um, oh, apparently a million mums, which is 187 people. <laughs> so yeah. it's book girl, yeah. Um, but, but I do have the alerts. Because this goes on YouTube, it goes on Twitch highlight, it goes on iTunes, Spotify, everywhere. I have uh, all the alerts turned off. So if anybody, I'll go and thank you at the end. But like uh, any follows, any subs, raids, thank you all so, so much. Um, but yeah, apparently when I play Mario Kart, yeah, I, I didn't think I was competitive. And then I, then you play Mario Kart and... Uh, yeah, Gary with some famous <laughs> lines. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, so, what game do you think you've put the most time into? Easily Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah. Uh, I started playing Final Fantasy XIV. Oh my gosh, when was it? 2015? Uh, and pretty much have played it religiously since then. Now, right now, it's mostly like an off stream game. Uh, but I started playing during the Heaven's Ward, so the second expansion after the the relaunch after the disastrous like 1.0 um but i i've played pro- like probably hundreds i i don't even want to do the playtime command in the game because <laughs> i'm sure i put a, a, a lot of time into it <laughs> yeah i'm like 600 700 hours which was it's actually my second most after now <laughs> after animal crossing yeah. but, uh, <laughs> uh, i started about the same time as you as well did you go like right to the end of the story straight away I did. I, I mean, I think when I first started playing, I, I took my time. So like, since I started playing during Heaven's Ward and there was like, really, like, if you got through like the, the, the 2.0 stuff, which was a mess, I mean, mm-hmm. they've recently changed that. But once you get through that 2.0 stuff, then 3.0 is like, so, so fun. Like Heaven's Ward is also a really great expansion. And I really took my time in Heaven's Ward. Mm-hmm. And then now I think I'm at the point where like, because I do like my the thing I love the most is like savage rating. And I have a lovely, a lovely team that I, and Davies in here, but it's, uh, mo- I think all, uh, seven out of eight of us are all LGBT and we just call it the rainbow Raiders. And we get together like two times per week on like the new, like I really love savage rating and just hanging out with friends. So mm. that's predominantly what I do. So I sort of rush, I don't write, like I listen to the story, but I sort of rush through now. Cause you like want to get to that point where you can get to the end game content. What's your main? So I, my, my first main was summoner mm-hmm. uh, and I was a summoner, all, like all of heaven's ward. And I did like raiding as a summoner for a long time. And then as Stormblood, I switched to scholar. So I was a scholar mm-hmm. main for a long time. And now I am un- uh, unfortunately switching to a tank main for the <gasps> next. He's so a- <laughs> yeah. So now I'm a warrior main. Apparently oh. love that for me. <laughs> I like warriors. Although I'm dark knight now. I like a good, I like the, the teeth coming up from the ground. It's the yeah. only one I can actually catch on. Yeah. <laughs> Mo- modular top. <laughs> <laughs> top moment. <laughs> oh, I can't heal. I'm crap at healing. Because I always played it on controller because I played it on PS. Listen, you just needed oh. to play Scholar because Scholar is just a broil mage. Like, I don't know what healing is myself. I was more, how many broils can I fit into this rotation? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I just yeah, scholars are the people that just stand there with symbols and books, isn't it? Isn't that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mine. I like that one. Look pretty. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a lot. Yeah. He's so good though. Does your partner play Final Fantasy yeah. 14 as well? Uh, actually, one of the one of the ways like Nick and I got really close is like pretty much after we started dating, we started playing Final Fantasy 14 together. So Nick's been playing almost as long as I have, and I. I got him into it because before I played 14, I played Final Fantasy 11, which was uh, Square Enix's first MMORPG um, with my little brother, like like all through middle school and high school and then into even into college a little bit. Um, so I was like, Nick, I think you'll really love this. Like, let's play this together. So we played, we started off playing Final Fantasy 14 together and Nick's actually on the raid team with us. So, yeah. <laughs> so Nick does, he does our Savage Raids with us as well. Does he play in the next room or... 
Yeah, he's he's in the bedroom, and then I have like a streaming room. So like, poor Nick has like the sort of like the janky setup. But <laughs> <laughs> has he ever attempted to start streaming as well, or is that your thing? I think it's mostly my thing. I think so. Nick works in the healthcare field. He's a, a nurse anesthetist, which is sort of unique to the the U.S. But he has a master's in nursing, and then he can administer anesthesia. Um, and he works very strange hours. So like, for example, like he works three twelves, but can also be on call. Um, so I think he typically, like, he really has sort of done his own thing with like a makeup journey, mm. uh, which I'm like really proud of him for like being able to like, sort of, you know, you know, delve into, you know, sort of that, like being able to be comfortable and confident with your feminine side and, and, you know, even beyond that, like makeup is just an item. It doesn't really have a gender. So him being able to do that has been really, really cool to see. Yeah. Um, now he does love video games and, you know, he's sometimes joked around like, maybe I want to, maybe I want to stream sometime. And if he did want to do it, I would be like all for it because he'd be hilarious to watch. Yeah. <laughs> would you ever feel like, cause I've seen him, is he game? Cause I've seen him on your stream before, but, yeah. um, as he gamed, would you, would you ever let him have it, you know, for an hour or two? Yeah, I mean, uh, we've we've done some things like I've tried to do incentives on stream where he will stream and he'll do a scary game, but he is too scared of scary games. I remember like <laughs> one, of, I wanted him to play Visage and he played like the first five minutes and he was like, nope, done. And then he just like got up and walked away. <laughs> can relate, can relate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, pro game. Mr. Will says Nick is a pro gamer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Visage, I can, I can definitely understand yeah, that absolutely <laughs> no no idea no wouldn't like that one um <laughs> what what are your top three games of all time if you had to pick Ooh. um so i'm a final fantasy gay oh um I, i've like loved final fantasy games my whole life so they're mostly gonna fall into that category yeah. so my my three favorite games of all time um are final fantasy 12 Ooh. final fantasy tactics and then the the first Last of Us, the Last of Us Part One, wow. are my favorite games of all time. So not fourteen or nine. No, I love. No, don't get me wrong. I love them all. Uh, but like nine has a, a unique ending that sort of like the bait and switch ending. I didn't like. Mm -hmm. uh, like when I look back on it, and I just loved twelve so much. Final Fantasy Tactics is like Chef's Kiss, and then um, like. Uh, I just I remember playing The Last of Us Part One, and it was well after it came out, and just being like absolutely stunned by how much I enjoyed it. So, mm. have you played the second one? I did play the second one. I liked. I did like the second one actually. Yeah. Uh, I I definitely think there were some things that I wouldn't have done in the game, like if if I were personally involved in the development of it. Like yeah. you know, like dead naming was very, um, it felt very insensitive and. You unnecessary know, maybe i felt it, yeah and and to like i i really did not like the dogs like having to no. kill the dogs it, it just felt like excessive so there was things i would change about it i still did enjoy it and i actually liked the story i didn't mind what happened early in the game i didn't mind sort of like where it went later in the game either mm -hmm. um but i definitely didn't love it as, as much as the first one yeah i i agree the first one i played a bit later but it was yeah it was on it was the remastered one Speaking of, by yeah. the way, the Final Fantasy XII, would you recommend playing the Zodiac Age? Because I never played, well, I never finished twelve. I only... Yeah, I would highly recommend it. It is it is probably, uh, like, other than Tactics, but, like, you know, like, Final Fantasy XII is my favorite standalone. And the Zodiac Age makes it better because it sort of makes the the Gambit system and the the play a little bit more smooth. Mm -hmm. um, so they definitely address some of, like, the things that people didn't love about the original one with the remaster and Zodiac Age, and I cannot recommend 12 enough. <laughs> okay, well, maybe if it comes out on PS5, you know, they give an update. <laughs> That's exactly. what I'm going to do. Is like yeah. anytime they release a patch that updates a PS4 game, I'm going to, all right, I'm downloading that and playing that. <laughs> uh, who is it that just recently did a playthrough of Zodiac Age? Somebody, I feel like on Rainbow I Arcade. I think Glenn, Glenn did one, I think, recently. It was Glenn, yeah. Yeah. Glenn Coventry playing Zodiac Age was so good to, yeah, to live for <laughs> it really was um and yeah somebody in the chat i liked uh but andy says i liked abby more than early by the end of it i agree yeah. i did i actually liked i i thought it was interesting sort of and that's why i enjoyed the last of us part two because i thought it was like a really good story on 
the reality of a, a scenario like that and that there's like sort of you know two sides of the coin right and you know i think we i think the reason so many people were jarred by it is because like the first game really you fall in love with joel and ellie yeah and then they are asking you like the creators are literally asking you to like take a step back and realize that like the things that they did in the first game have consequences that affected other people as well. Yeah. And you have to sort of be willing to go on that journey. And I think that a lot of the reason people didn't love it is because individuals had to sort of get out of that mindset of like being like Ellie and Joel stands right from the first game, you have to like realize that they're humans who can make mistakes and, and be able to sort of go on that journey. Yeah. There's some people who, don't like to see the other side of uh you know the other things exactly. from other perspectives yeah um, but yeah no, i really liked that even owen and uh yeah it was interesting to see um okay well oh, this one i always really like asking this question what is your favorite game soundtrack it's 100 percent final fantasy 10 oh. i yeah. love like I've been watching, there's a, a streamer who's part of Rainbow Arcade, Louisiana, is doing their first playthrough of Final Fantasy X, and I've been lurking. And just, like, even the even the music and just, like, the zones, it's so beautiful. Like, the music is so good. But I also, like, um, I remember I, I played piano. I practiced, you know, learned piano for, like, 12 years. My parents had me do that. And <laughs> I remember being in middle, no, probably early elementary, or late elementary school, and getting like the the music uh the sheet music for final fantasy 10 and begging my piano instructor to let me learn how to play the songs from final fantasy 10 and so for me there's like a like songs like to xanarkand and yeah. they just have like a very there's like a soft spot in my heart for that soundtrack <laughs> yeah final fantasy 10 is like the first game i fell in love with and i, I obviously loved games growing up played them but the one that i always remember is yeah, it's Final Fantasy X. Oh my god, yeah, I remember crying. It's like, that's the oh, first yeah. time I've cried in a video game. Like, once you get to the end and you realize what's going on, I, like, bawled my... I was, like, at my parents' home in, like, probably, what, it was, like, 2001, 2002 or something like that. So I was, like, maybe about to be in middle school and just bawling my eyes out. <laughs> Same. I actually, um, I think the, the bit where they're in the water and they kiss, that was the first and currently the last time that I've kind of cried over a heterosexual relationship it was yeah. <laughs> the first and the last for me yeah yeah the only time i let that one slip it was it was so good if i actually stopped playing Final fantasy 10 for a while um and then i remember going we had a religious education class and the whole class was about sin and the entire time i was thinking oh shit, i really want to play Final, go back to Final fantasy 10 i, I love that because the the, the yeah villain in that is called sin yeah. and at the end of it i was like right and i went back and like that week i finished it <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I, I defeated sin and so I just remember, dude, like my other thing as well was like i remember i really liked all the summons in 10 and i like barely leveled up my characters and let me just say yuna became like my dps turret and i would just cast the summon and it would be over and i'd be like okay love this <laughs> <laughs> so powerful what did you think of 10 too then I like Ten Two. I feel like Ten Two definitely screamed LGBT rights. <laughs> um, now I didn't love it as much as as the first one. Um, and two, I also I know that there was like multiple endings, but I'm a fan. I'm gonna be honest. I'm like a fan of a sad ending. I feel like it makes it more impactful for me. So like how Final Fantasy Ten ended, I thought was like perfect. Mm. Um, and so X Two, I think my qualm is that like you can sort of fix that into a certain extent and. It was still like really, I still loved X2, um, but it, it, I didn't love it as much as 10. I love a sad ending. Yeah, I'm, I like it. Feels, yeah, feels real. Yeah. I was like that with, um, I've mentioned it a few times on stream, La La Land. Have you seen La La Land? Oh, yes. I actually really liked La La Land. Same. I remember I was like hating on it and I was like, this is good because it's, yeah. it's real life. Like yeah. shit like that happens. Like you, not everybody has like a fairy tale ending and that's okay. I like yeah. and, I loved how at the end of La La Land, they were just like, acknowledged that they had something amazing. It came to an end and, y you know, yeehaw. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same with, uh, what's the other one that came out like that? The one with Lady Gaga, the one with only two decent songs. Oh, Star is Born. Star is Born. Yeah. That's what it was. Another yeah. one. I'm just a sucker for a sad uh -huh. ending. Realistic. Yep. What's it I, you know. I was watching the, I know this is going to upset people. I watched The Greatest Showman and like, 15 20 minutes before the end i was like i know what this is going to end up like i'm, I'm gone <laughs> so i just got up and left dave yeah. was furious he's like well you can't just leave he's like 
20 minutes left, 15 minutes left. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know what's going to happen. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, I can listen to the soundtrack if I want the music, but. Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, now going on to like the games that you're playing now. What games yeah. are you playing now? Because you're, it seems to be a different one every time I look. Yeah. So I, I've realized that like what I really love doing is like shorter narrative games. Like I, I'm really, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla on my Very own short. right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I love short uh, narrative games. So currently, Valhalla. <laughs> yeah, but I'm playing for myself because I yeah. I feel like if I were to play a game that like takes 60 to 80 hours to complete, I would literally be streaming it all of 2021. Mm -hmm. So I really like shorter narrative games. And so like for example, like one that like I am playing AC Valhalla, but it's in my own time. I just recently finished Soma, uh, oh. the horror game, um, and that's definitely probably a top 10 game for me uh so soma i really really loved um and then beyond that like i've obviously like i've played a lot of and i think it's like maybe a thing with 2020 as well because we all want to you know hang out with friends in whatever way we can but you know games like fall guys among us like fan uh Phantas phasmophobia have been really lovely because they allow sort of that like interaction with friends and family that that you know it, it makes it a little bit easier to go through the quarantining and things like that so um and i think i am gonna be i think i am gonna be starting to playing bugs bug snacks uh, today which i haven't started yet but i'm bug. really excited i've heard really good things like people like sierra mist i actually think said it was their game might be their contender for game of the year <laughs> yeah i i played about 30 minutes of bug snacks um little 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 spoiler a minute and a half in lesbian relationship <laughs> literally a minute and a half into the game I love that. <laughs> it was like yep yeah, okay this game i'm gonna love <laughs> and it's fun and burger 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 if that, that you will have imprinted in your head uh by the end of today so i can't wait to see that you're playing that tonight you say yeah i'm gonna start tonight yep oh, there's so much queer content says makeup okay i need to play more of it yeah i was I'm really excited so good what um so we, when with valhalla are you playing that on pc or ps5 I'm playing it. I'm actually playing it. I actually got very, very lucky because I was able to get an Xbox Series X and a PlayStation 5. Oh. And the first one that came to me was the Xbox Series X. So I'm actually playing it on that. Uh, um, how was it on the? It's really good. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I would notice it much in my gaming room because I don't have like a, I don't have a right capture card for 4K and things like that. But my TV in the living room is 4K. And I've, I've, I think it looks beautiful. Uh, and I think probably on the Xbox Series X, the most amazing thing is like the quick resume. I can't like you literally like can shut it down and then within two seconds, it's like right back up. <laughs> like it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> I can't wait. Two days, two days. I just, I'm, all the games that I'm buying now, I'm getting for PS4 that have like free updates. And I'm yeah. allowing myself like a couple of hours to play it, like with Watch Dogs Legion and Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And I've like put it to one side because I'm just, I'm just waiting. Oh, yeah, can't wait. Um, okay, what? So like, do you game quite a bit off stream? I do. I have like, I have games that I definitely gravitate towards off stream. Like I said, I play a lot of Final Fantasy 14 off stream. Um, I really enjoy, like I've always loved like longer story driven games. Like, like I said, I fell in love with Final Fantasy 9. So like my love for story driven games is like very strong. And I find that I really enjoy playing those type of games off stream. Um, and then too, like even, even games like, for example, I really enjoy Dead by Daylight. And I know, I don't know, have you played it yet, Ben? Yeah, uh, I every, I played it like three times, and at the end of every single time, I uh, I, I uninstall it. <laughs> so, I, I play that quite a bit off stream too, because it's just like, I I think I try to tell myself that I have I'm very extroverted, so 2020 has been like particularly hard for me not being around friends. Um, so being able to like just hop on like Final Fantasy 14 or Dead by Daylight or something and just being able to like play some games with friends and hop into voice comms has always been it's been like really helpful for me um, over the course of this year. Yeah, multiplayer games have definitely been uh, really, really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. I have had times with Dead by Daylight where I've like, okay, if I, you know, if I reach this goal or at this time, I will do some Dead by Daylight. And <laughs> I have had fun before with it with some friends, but it's. And I think yeah. I had like an update and stuff. By the way, we, we were deviating off our flight path because, as I told you, the uh, AI is uh, super glitchy. So we're. Oh, no. Should I buckle in? Yeah, buckle <laughs> in. There's. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I hope. <laughs> yeah, please. 
<laughs> Seabell should be on anyway, but uh, oh dear. Uh, let's hope uh, hope you didn't have a drink <laughs> on the <laughs> on there. There we go. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful. Look at it. We're going to Lesbos. Yeah, it's not it's taking us. No, we don't want to go to Lesbos. We know. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong one. We're going to Mykonos. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, gay equivalent. Um, what? Um, how do you find time to game? <laughs> because you're streaming quite a bit. You've got Rainbow yeah. Arcade. You work. I mean, are you working from home or? Yeah, I'm working from home, so that definitely helps. Um, I I think right now, and it's something that I'm working on, especially with like AC Valhalla. I need to like make more time to just play games for myself because. For a long time there, I've been I've been so busy that like my gaming has literally been pretty much just like what I have time to stream. Mm -hmm. um, so I I'm trying to get better at not just doing that because like a, a lot of the time it's just like I'm just putting in like time to game into my stream time. So it's been nice to just like take a step back and like be able to play like AC Valhalla for me, you know? Yeah. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the PS5 on the TV downstairs and I'm not going to stream from it just keep it there something to exactly. chill downstairs exactly yeah the moment i'm until that happens i'm just going down and watching the crown oh my gosh i still need to get caught up on the crown i haven't watched season three yet season three yeah oh no yeah, let me watch season three and then do season four yeah three is uh three is great there's a an episode in set in wales because there was a big Ooh. tragedy that happened in wales and uh it's quite close to where where i live in fact i'm actually oh, going to do a cycle ride at some point when because of this really weird yeah because of the lockdown they've closed a bridge like literally the only bridge you can go on this one cycle route so i can't oh, uh, no. yeah it's really really annoying uh and yeah once i once that's reopened i can actually go up to this little village which uh yeah right. it was really really bad really oh, terrible okay. tragedy but the whole like the episode on it was just so well done and so many people were like they didn't know about it um wow. but it's uh i won't spoil it because it's <laughs> the, the shock of it kind of yeah it it's uh, of what happens is really yeah, uh, it's like next on my list right now. I really have to get caught up on the crown. Yeah. Oh, I just watched the new, the first episode of four Diana's in it and Thatcher. It's like, oh, it's going to be a good season. Who, who plays Thatcher? <clears throat> Isn't it Gillian Anderson? Yeah. Gillian Anderson. <clears throat> I love, I love them so much. It was a very good voice. <laughs> For <laughs> Thatcher, she was, yeah. It's like Thatcher is such a caricature of herself. That it's, it's pretty difficult to actually impersonate her but she does a she does a very good job a very good job right her. um what future games are you looking forward to so it sounds like you play quite a bit so i imagine there's quite a few coming out that you're yeah. looking forward to i'm i'm definitely looking forward to cyberpunk i'm weary of it a little bit because of you know some of like the issues around like what the studios face around crunch and um you know some of the the misfires on trans representation i'm curious mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious and hopeful that they're getting those things right so i am excited about it but like sort of wearily so yeah um and then i think oh will I, you be streaming I, uh cyberpunk i think i will i know it's like a longer game but i think i'm gonna like really try to like hunker down and do that one on stream wow all of it nice you're gonna yeah, yeah. we, we discussed try. it on the panel like content warnings and stuff and, and yeah. hopefully they'll allow it to uh to be reviewed ahead of time yeah so we can see oh, any others you say i i mean this i know it's like super long off but i'm so excited for final fantasy 16 i'm like i've been like chomping at the bit for it because i i of all the final fantasy games actually final fantasy 15 is my least favorite um so i've sort of been waiting for uh, uh another like main line final fantasy game that like get, sort of gets back to like the things that i've loved about final fantasy so uh because not that final fantasy 15 was awful but it just like didn't feel like the same thing to me and so i'm excited yeah. to see what they do with 16 and i'm hopeful that they sort of maybe go back to their roots because I know it looks a little like 15. It looks very similar to it, but I'm hoping that they sort of lean into like the fantasy and, yeah. and sort of all the things I love about like the, the final fantasy games. I get like Witcher vibe slightly of it kind of bit yeah. medieval style, which yeah, medieval, that's like nine, I suppose, isn't it really that kind of, yeah. I and I see money does stuff point out like Yoshi P is involved. Yes. And I have like a really like uh, with what Yoshi P did with Final Fantasy 14, it gives me a lot of hope for 16. I, I'm going to be the one person that totally, yeah, goes against everything in the chat. But I, I didn't mind 15. <laughs> like I played it and got to the end. 
and uh and i yeah. think the dlcs make it better too like i think the, my problem was that, like i played it at launch and i remember Same. just being underwhelmed and it was still it was a good game don't get me wrong but like i think when i compare it to other final fantasies it just was really lacking so i i like i, I found the made better. i found that the combat was like a bit messy and then i played seven remake and i was like okay this is what it should have been exactly yeah oh have you uh did you play seven remake did you finish it uh, I did. I absolutely did. And I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, same. Yeah. Oh, this is Ed says, are we talking about Final Fantasy? Ed, rewind to the beginning because this has been Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy loving. <laughs> you were saying actually about 10 being your soundtrack. I remember buying 10 and importing it from Japan <laughs> when I was like oh, 15 wow. or whatever or 14 because <laughs> I was just so obsessed with it. And yes, my parents used to often hear that suit yeah. to being played constantly oh the sm remake another amazing soundtrack yeah it really is i got the 8 cd version of it it's uh and also but i don't have a cd player so that's a bit of a point that's the uh, thing <laughs> <laughs> uh, um what uh so yeah you uh, which ones of those are you going to stream so you're going to stream um you said you're going to stream cyberpunk are there any that yeah. you're like not going to stream you just want to play like hellblade um... 2 maybe do you think you'll stream that I will definitely do the new Hellblade game for sure, because Hellblade was, I think, one of the most emotional and raw games I ever played. Uh, yeah. I think like, and it's one that like stuck with me too, especially because like when you finish the game, um, they, there's actually like a quick little, I think it was like 15 or 20 minute um, documentary sort of on how they did it. Mm -hmm. And like playing the game and feeling so raw about how it was created and then seeing what went into oh, it. Yeah. That's like really brought it all together for me. So I'm actually very, very excited about the next Hell Hellblade. And the, like, I've never ever been into ASMR, but that guy's voice was just, hello, oh my God, come over yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just amazing. And yeah. Cinema Red, thank you so much for the raid. Uh, I'm about to turn on the autopilot again. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens this time. See if it, uh, see if it actually works. Um, okay, yeah, yeah, Hell, Hellblade 2, I can't wait. Honestly, that 30 minutes, I'm glad I didn't watch it before, but it did it make you kind of want to play it again? Yeah, it did, because it, to see the sort of the lengths they went to, and, and that sort of gets back to what we talked about earlier about, like, game studios trying to get representation right, mm. and I just, it made me appreciate, like, I already loved the game. I'm glad I also didn't watch it first, but... Yeah. I played it. I absolutely loved the game. I remember be feeling very raw and emotional after, and then like being able to go back and watch it after that was just absolutely awe inspiring. Like I just, it was really amazing to go back and watch that documentary then afterwards. Yeah. I felt like watching that documentary. In fact, I think like the week after I'd spent my time going through Twitch, the Twitch directory, watching people playing it and like, yeah, revisiting and, and seeing it there. Yeah. It's on Game Pass. If anybody's got Game Pass. Oh my gosh. Please yeah. play Hellblade. It's brilliant. <laughs> so good um okay now going on to like your uh future goals and stuff what um well no, not future goals but what's your game of the year so far i think my game of the year is final fantasy 7r to be honest it, i thought it was like a really good a really thoughtful and a really sort of like they put a lot of love into it to like this series that everybody loves so much so i think for me final fantasy 7r the other one i will say um is uh I, i'm gonna throw animal crossing in there and i think it's like i i think there's something to be said about what animal crossing did for you know everybody as the the pandemic got underway and oh, yeah. there's sort of like this special magic to animal crossing and granted i don't play it as often anymore but i i really think that you know sort of for me ff7r and and animal crossing new horizons like they, if I think back onto like what I've done this past year and what's what game has like stuck with me, those are probably the two. Yeah. Oh, Final Fantasy. I remember going over to your island. I think I bought a ladder on your island. It was the first time I had the ladder and I got to oh, so much access yeah. because of that. Yeah. <laughs> Animal Crossing. I can relate. That changed my streaming career pretty much. <laughs> 180. What did, um, have you seen the new update for it? I did. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited for the new update. And I think the thing that I'm really excited now, I wish it was at launch, but, um, you know, seeing the, the hairstyles, the more yeah. diverse and inclusive hairstyles was really nice to see. Of course, I like, obviously we want those things to be in, you know, put into games from the moment they, you know, first are launched, but it yeah. was really nice to see that. That's right. I think they had like short dreads and that was the only one that they had, uh, exactly. from the start. 
Uh, and we can be bold as well. <laughs> if you want to be bold. <gasps> There's going to be some interesting looks. Yeah, and finally, I'm looking forward to doing some uh, reactions that all the villagers have been able to do since the start. And now we can do them. <gasps> like, sit down. <clears throat> is the plane moving? The plane is moving. Uh, we're just over the water. Um, and hopefully, although we are kind of... I say the autopilot is slightly broken. We are... Uh, by the way, yeah, we, I should really explain where we are. Uh, I should really kind of find out where we are as well. We're <laughs> 82 nautical miles from uh, Mykonos. Although heading slightly off. Um, we're currently going past the... Oh gosh, how do I say this? Uh, you can do it. Uh, see, I don't know how to... Uh, if I click on this. Coracida. Oh my god, that looks gorgeous. <laughs> Just had a look at the uh, picture. Coracida. Have a look at that beach. Jesus, that is... Oh, I want to go to that. I'd love to go to Greece. Have you ever been to Greece? I have never been to Greece, no. no. I would love to go once everything, you know, gets back to normal. I would love to visit someday. I don't know if I'm, like, I'm not necessarily drawn to, like, Mykonos or anything like that, but I would mm -hmm. love to go to Athens because I was uh, uh, in in college, and to, to a certain extent, I'm, like, was, like, a huge history fan, so. <laughs> so you're, not, you're not a circuit gay? No, yeah, no. You know, I, maybe, you know, the tank tops all the time on stream might come across one way, but I... <laughs> yeah, don't, we've got a question on that coming up later. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry ed i will get your question asked uh, <laughs> uh no same same exactly like his the history and the food oh yeah Greek food absolutely love but yeah i used to live in barcelona and every month well every every month every year there was like literally one month of circuit parties and i used oh, to yeah. live in la champla yeah. which is where it was based I, I was like every time i was there i'm like this must be how uh straight people feel because like all the way around it's just like Gay people, gay like couples everywhere. Yeah. So, have you been? Did you ever go? Uh, you know, to Barcelona during a circuit party? I never joined a circuit party. I have been to Spain, but not Barcelona. My uh, grandparents were actually originally from before they moved to Canada. They were actually from the area of France, right across the border from Spain. Mm -hmm. uh, so Landocusion in the southern part. Um, so. I wish I had gone to Barcelona, but I went back to that area of France and then crossed over the border into into Spain for a little bit, but never got to Barcelona, unfortunately. Oh, Barcelona is one of my one of my favorite cities. Not just because I live there, but it's just yeah, Chef's Kiss is brilliant. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay, so what are your plans for the future? What's ahead for Justin Nick? I. I think honestly, just like sticking with, with what I've been doing, I, I feel I, you know, and of course I'm always constantly working on it. Cause I think we're all comparing ourselves to others, but I, I definitely like where I am right now. I, I mean, I want to grow, I want to continue growing, but uh, you know, working, you know, being able to work really hard with, with regard to rainbow arcade, uh, is something that I'm really looking forward to. And, you know, I, I, I want to see my channel, you know, continue to grow. I would love and, and something that like, Sort of like my vision board for myself is like someday I would love to be like more directly involved in like whether that be like uh, game commentating or or working more closely with the industry. So it sort of goes back to what I said about, you know, the thing I love about Twitch being a bridge and um, I can already see how sort of it's creating that bridge, not just for creators to, to have more of a voice in the industry, but you know, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that I can sort of see myself in that in that same thing and, and working into like getting within more intimately involved in the industry as well. I've, I've turned on autopilot. Uh, apologies for your drinks uh, <laughs> that were all. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, just just wait. I'm, I'm going to turn on the autopilot to see if it'll get us there because we're only 66 nautical miles away. Uh, so autopilot is last Whoa, time that oh god that drop. i felt it yeah we are yeah sorry about your drink we'll get you another one uh <laughs> yeah the sorry the, the co-pilot is currently sat on my lap right now we're going around i've clicked so sometimes it, le it likes to kind of drop down and then kind of just write itself back that's what happened last time um so hopefully hopefully this time is what it's doing it might, i don't know why it's if it's not quite at the right height it just does like a quick you know, one eight, a quick 360 yeah. and then continues yeah. going. <laughs> We've run out of vomit bags. I'm sorry. Just, just do it in your hand. Just uh, <laughs> don't clap. Oh. Uh, my um, apple juice dropped to my Nintendo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, it is a private plane. It's, you know, you're lucky to even to be on here. <laughs> so, yeah. Apologies if anybody. Yeah. Has anybody ever got travel sick from a, <laughs> from a podcast before? 
<laughs> this might be the first. Uh, I'll make sure I get to the cockpit to let the pilot know what I think. Thank you very much. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, we are doing a, uh, a 180. Oh, we're doing a 360 at the moment. Why is... I'm not sure why the flight path has gone white now. Um, oh, it's... Oh, we're heading back. <laughs> we're going, we're we're going, going back. back. He's like, no, sorry. Uh, your gay card was revoked. Visa cancelled. <laughs> it's... Uh, we're, I'm not, I, yeah, it's, this is autopilot, and I don't know why, but for some reason the flight path has gone white, and it's turned 180, so let's, let's manually move it. Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. Oh, oh. It's like, sorry about that. Oh. I didn't be like this, apparently, right now. You, you, no, no. <laughs> now you wondered why the uh why the um seat belts were like a roller coaster over the top over the shoulders there we go there are snakes in this plane <laughs> a couple of snakes yeah okay well i'm gonna have to manually i'll manually guide it to our destination there we go. <laughs> gay panic on jet stream is that sick <laughs> oh well yeah it's the first ride not the last ride on the way to mykonos uh <laughs> back yeah, please just ignore the uh, oxygen masks that fell uh, from there. And oh. put it on yourself first and then help others. Uh, so when would you say that you're... Yeah, exactly. Would you... Um, are, you are you keeping Justin Nick? Uh, no, I, I'm in the process of trying to get my name changed on, on Twitch. And mostly it's that it's a, it's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> name so people are like is it nick or is it justin i was like i do not want to add to this confusion so i am trying to get uh my name changed but it's been quite an arduous process with twitch unfortunately <laughs> really oh no are you, are you able to give us a little hint or uh yeah it's actually i'm going with justin plus um but uh it's just taking a little while on twitch's end um so yeah. not just in top gaming it's <laughs> kind of, you know i'm <laughs> To lie in my branding. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> Justin Top Gamer, yeah. Justin Plus, isn't is it Grinder Plus? Is that the premium one as well? Yeah, I think Grinder Plus is the premium one. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, Justin's like, well, Justin Bottom Gaming. No, that. Oh, is that what you're changing to, Justin? Maybe. No, it should be. You know what? Maybe, maybe we're just gonna drop Justin altogether, and I'm just gonna be Modular Top. Modular you know? Oh my god, what was your name on? Uh... Among it's us, Steam. it's on Steam. Yeah, it's my Steam name, and I've had multiple people reach out and be like, "Are you modular top?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. me. What was your What was your Among Us nickname? I think it was Modular Top. I actually think I did Modular Top for that as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I can I remember. Uh, yeah, it was. Oh, what was it? it? Was no, it was there something that you were going to sell? Oh, Power Blottom. Power yeah. Blottom. <laughs> oh, that's the future thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, Ben and I both have very oily skin and mm -hmm. our, our our key lights definitely pick up that oil. Oh, my God. So take care of that oil with just a dab of Power Blottom. Now available on Elgato. Thank you. <laughs> Justine Plus. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these lights, like I'm... It's not 18%. I'm, I am like, yeah. just try putting these up any higher and I get a tan. Uh, I do the same thing. Mine are at like five. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wow, yeah, Dave, my partner, he's got one of these like light, lights because uh, because we're staying in a lot, and also Cardiff is the rainiest city in the whole of the yeah. UK. So he's got one of these like lights that um, you know it's meant to kind of simulate having vitamin D or whatever, having the sun, and and it's meant to cheer you up and stuff. And I'm just yeah. like that is not even as bright as my as my light on ten percent. <laughs> just sit on my just sit at the desk for five minutes, you know, with the lights on full. Yeah. <laughs> He got a sad light. Yeah, a sad light. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, sounds so depressing. Okay, let's move on to some of the questions from the chat. I'm very excited for this. Yeah, they've had some, they're mixed in uh, seriousness. <laughs> definitely, yeah. definitely mixed. So let's start with a serious one. There's some really yeah. good ones. Uh, this one was, um, I can't remember exactly who sent every single one, uh, but I know that this one was from Canadian Book Girl, aka Gemma who said, Justin recently talked about recognizing his privilege in the queer community as a white, cis male, fairly educated person. Um, how has that changed how he engages as a queer streamer on Twitch and in other parts of life? Yeah, I think for me, this journey sort of started with Instagram and uh, recognizing how, you know, first of all, you recognize how quickly like a, a, a heterosexual streamer especially or not a streamer but a heterosexual influencer 
who is white and male can quickly grow. And then, you know, you juxtapose that to it's much slower being, a, you know, a gay influencer. And then you also realize sort of like the layers of privilege, right? Mm. And, you know, I, I had really good, I have really good friends who, who are also influencers and they're, they're, you know, BIPOC and they grow even slower. And I think it first started there and you realize that that manifests everywhere. And this sort of also then gets into the work I've done. So my background's in public policy and I've worked for the federal government in the United States in two different capacities. One was with environmental uh, policy um, and a lot of the work that I did at the Environmental Protection Agency in, in Washington, D.C. was focused on environmental justice. And you recognize very quickly as you start doing that research that, uh, you know, there's a, a plethora of things that go into how environmental justice affects marginalized communities and that they're often the most affected by, for example, pollution or, or you know, the adverse activities of industry. Uh, then I also worked uh, in the Department of Health and Human Services then as well, uh, doing organ transplant policy. And again, it manifests in very interesting ways. You know, it's Steve Jobs, for example, got an organ very easily because he had the money and the resources to enroll in multiple transplant centers to get a liver. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you are a poor marginalized person that you may only have access to one transplant center or you might not even have the opportunity to do that in the first place so uh, that sort of all then comes together and, and with regard to streaming as well because we recognize that you know the sort of like the analogy i like to make is that you know white gay cisgendered streamers we really benefit in the community from that privilege and you know, I'm not saying I think it's it's no one's saying that if you are a white, gay, may, uh, a white, gay, cisgendered streamer, that there aren't, you know, obstacles for you on your journey to streaming. But my, the, what I always like to point out is that the obstacle for me could be like a small little three foot like wall. I have to just take a quick step over. It's still an annoyance, but it's just a quick step. Whereas you could have a a transgender uh, BIPOC creator who has a, uh, a 10 foot wall that's booby trapped that they have to crawl over, mm. um, just to get any form of recognition and have a seat at the table. So I think when you put it in those terms, it becomes more easy to understand that if you do come from a place of privilege, where if I can quickly get over and surmount the things that prevent me from being on the same level as uh, a cisgendered heterosexual white man on Twitch, when I am able to get over, it is also my responsibility to be aware that that privilege manifests, that I benefited from my privilege in that community. And then it's also on me to do the work of understanding where marginalized communities are and not putting the pressure on them to educate me either and then also being able to to reach out to them and being like you know i recognize my privilege how can we be in this together where i'm not taking your voice away from you but i'm also doing the things that are necessary so that we all win as a collective lgbtqi plus family and i think some of the issue really becomes that we've spent so much time talking about the progress that we've made not just on live streaming but in politics and in representation and it often takes the form of white gay men. And that's not enough. And now it's time that we start having serious conversations that our community is intersectional. There are a variety of stories and experiences, and they all deserve that same treatment. They all deserve that same respect. And I think that it manifests then beyond Twitch as well, because, you know, my time spent in policy, I literally could watch how policy has these adverse effects and that you know i even as i'm writing policy the problem then also becomes like i am white and gay and i have privilege so if i'm the one writing policy and i'm not asking people to provide their their situations and to qualitatively come to me with what's going on in their lives i'm also not writing good policy then right because i'm not listening to the things that they go through and i i personally haven't experienced the things that they go through so really what it boils down to is an awareness. It's an, also an educational component and understanding that the work of educating doesn't fall on those marginalized communities. Google is free. And then putting in the work then 
And it's something that I love talking, like Cypher of Tear talks about it quite a bit, but there's a big difference between being an ally and being an accomplice. And we should all strive to be accomplices. And that goes for us white cisgendered gay men because we need to put in the work too. Yeah. Like we have to be accomplices. I think sometimes we think because we are also ourselves marginalized that we don't need to do that, but we yeah. do. We need to put in the work as well. Could have said it better myself, really, honestly. <laughs> Um, we had a few comments in the chat, some really good ones. One, um, yeah, Jen was saying, Google is free. It really is. Yeah. The amount of times somebody was like, can somebody recommend some uh, 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 BIPOC tabletop games or tabletop uh, creators? And it's like, well, Google. <laughs> you know, yeah. use your Google. How can you, you yep. don't, these people don't need to educate you. It, yep. It's not their place to, you've got Google. Really? Yeah. You can do it. And like you know i've listened to like urban bohemian and and jess is in chat too go jg uh cypher of tear like there's also a component as well that like as we move forward you know i think the impetus starts being on like your what the media and the things that you can you consume should automatically be diverse like we we need to move past that point where it's like i'm looking for bipoc creators yeah. like we need to move past that point where we get to the point where it's just like diversity and inclusion and and having you know the media that we consume be diverse should just be an automatic thing that we do yeah without needing to ask and i i hope it starts moving in that direction more and i think it is i think it's slowly moving in that direction but i'm excited you know and i know cypher and brian have talked about it too where it's like we want people to come to our ttrpg shows not just because they're looking for bipoc ttrpgs like we want them to come because they enjoy ttrpgs period <laughs> yeah you know? have a look at your following list really it can it can tell you a lot about yourself and where you're missing out people, yeah yeah exactly. if you've got a, a non-diverse you know group of friends following list or you don't kind of uh you know immerse yourself in these type of situations and around these people you're missing out <laughs> you really are yeah. you're missing out absolutely um brilliant yeah okay let's see let's hope this next one okay uh, next one was, oh my gosh, I can't remember exactly who it was that said this, but thank you for it. Um, I'll be interested in the general journey from Insta to Twitch. Uh, what are like the pros, the cons, the wins, the failures, if you, you know, of comparing Insta to Twitch. You said before about how it's kind of two-dimensional yeah. on Instagram, whereas on Twitch you can be yourself, but are there any negatives or any presumptions maybe that people have made from you? About uh, you? I think so. I definitely, I definitely recognize that I come across a certain way on Instagram versus how I come across on Twitch because like on Instagram, you can't really get to know the real me. Um, and I, I think too, the other thing is like when we're talking about like social media and how it integrates into, into Twitch, like, uh, Instagram really is not a great tool. Generally speaking, y you know, I think Twitter and TikTok are really probably the tools. Like if you were really going to focus on like, uplifting your and and you know uplifting your twitch uh channel like you probably will much more benefit from like twitter and tiktok mm -hmm. uh and and two like i i think that you know generally speaking i i i just think that instagram sort of feeds into a i don't want to say like a delusion of what life is but it's definitely not a reality right yeah and even like what, you know, what anybody posts on, on Instagram tends to, again, it, it's very two dimensional and you go from, you go from, you know, doing very two dimensional quick snapshots of your life. And then you're on Twitch and you recognize that like when you're live for people and you're making these like real connections, it is, they are not part and parcel. Like Instagram and Twitch could not be further apart on like the social media scale. Yeah. Um, and and you quickly realize that like you know on on instagram like if i am having a bad day you would never know but on twitch you're gonna know like you're gonna be able yeah. to tell that i'm having a bad day or that things are going on in my life or and you have to sort of get comfortable being uncomfortable with being real about you know yeah i'm a human being and and like you're gonna see that come through when i'm live and unfiltered on on twitch yeah because it's like uh like i said before a bit like a reality tv show <laughs> you're there exactly all the yeah when you go when you're live and like are you tired ben did you have a good sleep last night oh sorry yeah i am actually tired and thank you all noticed it <laughs> it's <Yeah>. like <laughs> you can't hide from that stuff yeah um okay now uh if you met your 15 year old self so 
unrelated kind of unrelated to actual streaming right. and stuff. If you could, if you met your 15 year old self, what would you say to him and what advice would you give him? By the way, we just, we are making the approach right now. Uh, the red lines are the, is that's the flight path to land. Uh, red means we're going way too fast. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm buckled in. <laughs> please buckle in. Please, please buckle in. Uh, and also I've got to say the chat, I will, this is going to be on YouTube. This will be on Spotify. This will be on um on Inst on uh, itunes etc etc the conversation if anybody wants to rec I, I have to recommend watching this as a highlight on twitch because you'll see the chat we've had such interesting viewpoints people not necessarily disagreeing but people point putting out their points of view and and debate going on i really highly recommend uh checking it out on there if you are listening to this on any any other platform but yeah so sorry if you make your 15 year old self what would you say to him I wish that I was more comfortable being who I was. I, that was like, I remember being 15 was like a really tumultuous time for me because that's actually when I left Canada and moved to the United States. And um, I had uh, grown up, uh, French was my first language because I was uh, raised in the French speaking part of Canada mm -hmm. uh, and moved really to the middle of nowhere uh, in Pennsylvania in the United States. Mm -hmm. And I sort of wanted to hide everything about who I was. Like I felt very uncomfortable because I definitely had uh, at the time a very thick, you know, French Canadian accent. I, I think probably then I also, I for sure knew I was gay, but obviously didn't want to, you know, ruffle any feathers and, and I was not in a very diverse place. So I spent a lot of time, you know, trying to cover up who I was and not embracing those things. And I, if I could go back and tell my 15 year old self, I would, I would, I would just tell myself to be more at ease with who I am and, and not be so concerned about what people thought. Yeah. It's easy. Like nowadays, when you look back at it, it's kind of easy to just not care. But I remember yeah. this being like that. Yeah. you really, you want to kind of fit in. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love the giant too fast, too fast <laughs> sign. <laughs> just <laughs> I'm the <laughs> I can see your eyes like uh, <laughs> widening. Oh, we go fast. <laughs> this is a little too fast. Um, okay, now on to the uh, some other questions. Um, this is from Ed Knights. That's Ed underscore Knights, uh, who I will be doing. Who I've announced yesterday, I'm going to be starting a podcast with every Friday, every Thursday uh, for one hour. We're going to be talking about games, similar to Click Click Play, but just one hour. Um, because Ed knows everything about games, so we're going to be uh, we're going to be chatting a lot. To, uh, I'm going to be chatting a lot to Ed every every Thursday. But this, yeah, Ed underscore Knights, um, who likes to bake bread in various shapes of genitalia. Uh, <laughs> you should see this bread. Uh, he says, "Does Justin's wardrobe consist of anything other than tank tops?" <laughs> Oh my God. Love this for me. Um, you know, yes. Uh, I, <laughs> I think so when I, cause I worked for the federal government for so long and I, <laughs> he started out like when I was streaming, like, especially before COVID and things like that, I was always in like a suit and tie. So like when I come home, you know, my automatic thing is to get as comfortable as possible so I would just gravitate towards tank tops and that's what I would stream in, especially because my stream rooms get so uncomfortably yeah. hot and I already like have oily skin and on top of the sweat, it was just not a pretty sight. So I do indeed. Now, have you seen them? I think I've maybe streamed three times with a t-shirt on. <laughs> so that's saying something, you know, yeah. uh, three years and only three times, you know, we got one per year. <laughs> Santi says, it's so funny seeing Justin in other streams wearing sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm glad that I put that question. In. I'm like, Plea, yeah, don't wear a sleeve. We're, we're going to Mykonos. I'm surprised you're wearing a shirt, exactly. to be honest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm wearing your top at all. Uh, he wore a t-shirt to the gaming. Yes, you were on a yeah. podcast yesterday with Gaming Mug, a t-shirt. I did. I thought, I thought I need to be a little bit, you know, professional. I thought so I... we, we put on a t-shirt. <laughs> I did think there was something, there was something off on us. So I didn't realize it was that. That was, yeah. I was like, that just doesn't look like Justin. <laughs> it's like seeing like a dog walk on its back legs or something. It's like, it's, not quite, it's just out of its natural habitat. Oh okay. Um, we're a about to land we keep hearing the stall sounds <laughs> from the cockpit um but we're Whoa. just before we i have got two quick quick questions that we can huh? we can ask on the on the uh, ground if you don't mind yeah. but brace oh okay, too fast too, yeah brace 
we're oh, we're getting it too fast. We're getting double too fast. Oh no, not double too fast. Look at the you know before we inevitably crash here. Look at the beautiful Mykonos oh, countryside. Beautiful. <laughs> the amount of stuff that goes off on this island. <laughs> here we go. We're oh oh. So we don't hit the trees. We're at least we're. Um, I don't, I don't understand how this is too fast. It feels too slow, but we're we're gonna make it on the runway. Buckle up, brace, 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 brace. Yeah, we didn't bounce up. We didn't bounce up. I think that is the best. Oh, okay. Oh, we got a little bit of a swivel there. But oh yeah, a little yeah, shaking our tush. Landing. <laughs> I think that was probably the best landing. I mean, it doesn't take much, to be honest. The fact that we didn't bounce right back up into the air, that's already <laughs> best, the oh, best God. landing. <laughs> <sighs> we made, we're in, we're in Greece. I feel like the Ryanair clapping uh, <laughs> kind of sound effect would go off in the... <laughs> I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. <sighs> How many tequilas? Right? I would definitely do one after that landing. Um, uh, a lot. We're going immediately going to Lindsay Lohan's beach house. Yeah, we're going to be totally <laughs> pissed. Pissed as a fart <laughs> when we go over there. A couple of very quick questions before we finish. Um, with everything that's going on, this was I. Oh god, again, I'm not sure. I'm so sorry uh, for the person who asked. It, I didn't get the name, but with everyone that happened in everything that's happened in the U.S. in the last four years, have you ever considered moving back to Canada? Yes. So I I have. Uh, actually, in 2016, when Trump was elected, my mom called me crying and begging me to come back to Canada. Um, oh. But it's hard because I ended up because I I ended up staying in the U.S. for for undergrad and graduate school, um, and then it was easy to find a job uh, because of like the natural sort of networks that came out of that in the United States. So it was very hard to just like you know pick up and leave. Um, so you know I've definitely I've definitely thought about it. I I love Canada and I miss home quite a bit. Um, but a lot of my, a lot of my life is here in the United States now. It's also difficult for my, for my partner as well, because like I said, my, my partner is a, a certified nurse anesthetist. Um, and that doesn't exist outside the U S and Canada's, um, anesthesiologist, uh, like the doctors, they have a very strong union that doesn't allow them to practice in uh, Canada. So he would, he would have, we would have to live very close to the U S border and go back and forth. Oh yeah. But that'd be fun. Yeah. Uh, no, that, that's, yeah, that, that's interesting. That's great that your parent, that your mother was, uh, you know, yeah. worried about that. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, how, how has it been the last time it's been off for like personally, just for you, obviously for many other communities, it's been absolutely horrific. How personally for you has it been living there? Uh, the last four years. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think one of the things, this goes back to sort of our, our talk on privilege, because, you know, for, for me as like a white cisgendered man, I probably haven't been as affected by the policies, but, um, you know, because I, I do try to be intersectional and I, I try to learn and I, I try to be an accomplice to marginalized groups. It's been, it's been really sad for me to see my, my friends, suffer under the administration the last four years and and to sort of put this in context my when i was in um 2016 i was finishing up my master's pro, uh, in my master's program and worked in a toxicology lab doing research and um my the phd student who i worked really close with is a uh, a mexican immigrant or she's like a first generation person uh to the united states and she it was a really tough day to go in for both of us you know me as a as a gay as a gay man her as a you know a mexican immigrant in the sciences it was really tough and i remember us both like not really doing any work that day and just kind of crying and mm -hmm. um so you, you know for me you know there hasn't been as many things now granted there has been things that have affected me but definitely not as much as you know our 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 brothers and sisters in the community who face different layers of privilege mm. I can imagine. Really imagine. Final question. Final question. Um, yes. Oh, this is where we lose all the viewers. So this was from Sarah Kay, who is our fellow sportsing person. She wears polo uh -huh. necks and khakis, although she doesn't ever like to admit that. Um, she says, Justin played NCAA Division One soccer. He downplays it, but that's a very big deal. I'm sure you can come up with a sports question for him, Ben, with all your sportsing knowledge. Um, 
So, another kind of a related question. Uh, tell me, how's how's the Bundesliga going right now? Uh, you know, Bayern definitely somebody needs to step in and take it away from Bayern because mm. for the next couple of years, it doesn't look like anything's going to change. <laughs> do you want? Do you want Leap? Is it Leipzig Red Bull? Do you really want them to take it though? No, I don't. <laughs> but to be honest, to be fair, I'm actually a Bayern fan, but I even recognize that there is just not enough diversity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always Bayern. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really is. I've. Um, um, what are you, What's your opinion on Barnsley? Barnsley Football Club, who are currently sixteenth uh, in the Championship at the moment. <gasps> Isn't that your team? It is. Yeah, we had about a thirty minute chat last night on uh, on, on the Discord DMs about Barnsley <laughs> you know, Football Club. Yeah, the, the you know the the issue here in the US is that like it's so difficult to get you know good football because. The only time we really get it here, especially if you're not like, if you don't have like a, a an extensive cable network, if you especially because I've like cut the cord basically. But um, the only time you will see it is if very big name teams are playing, like Barcelona, yeah. you know, Real Madrid, uh, Man U, Liverpool, and then you only see those other teams if they are playing them. <laughs> yeah. And two, I think for me, what's I am not I like sports, but the only sports I like, and it's obviously a very us phenomena is um college sports in the us like i really gravitate towards like if i'm gonna watch something like it's gonna be like ncaa american football ncaa uh european football <laughs> or ncaa basketball like that's typically what i gravitate towards because i'm less of a fan of like um you know the major leagues if you will okay well there you go look at that sports question <laughs> If you have any questions also about Formula One, I can answer. You know, that's that's my Formula One is like literally the only sport I watch nowadays. Yeah. Although I'm sure people will be like, yeah, that's not a sport. <laughs> <laughs> but I miss I miss playing soccer. I, I had a lot of fun while I did it. And it was definitely especially because like the like NCAA sports become such money makers in the US or the colleges that they're associated with. They put a lot of uh it's a lot of pressure to maintain like practice and traveling across the country for games. And then on top of it, like I knew I, I was, I was okay enough at soccer to do division one soccer and NCAA, but I knew I was never going to go pro. So I was like, I'm going to like, I'm going to really focus on my studies. So I was like double majoring and triple minoring. And I was like really struggling to keep up. <laughs> May I, I hope it's not too a personal question, but what position are you? I, <laughs> I was left midfield, although they sometimes would swap me to left fullback, but I, I preferred playing left fullback, but I was fast. So they wanted me left mid usually. <laughs> okay. Oh, you left footed? I am. Yeah. Oh. But I'm right handed, but left footed yeah, for, of all the things. <laughs> Davey says, Justin was tight end. Don't let him fool. I <laughs> don't know what that means. Is that an American football thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Fast? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well. We've made it. Thank you so, 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 so much for agreeing this. Like it was a little because we were going to go to Athens, which is like a good hour 20. Uh -huh. And I think it was Swezel who would persuade us like, why are you not going to Mykonos? I'm like, oh, yeah, that, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. So yeah, we switched to it. We had a little slightly longer flight. But yeah, thank you so much for this. Um, it's been so informative. Yeah. Like getting I to had know a you. Blast. I had an absolute blast. This was so fun. And I'm really excited for us to go, you know, chill with Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, you guys in the club. You, oh, you go on the, get your Instagram, you know, get them, a, send them a message. I'm sure your friends on there. <laughs> get us into the parties. <laughs> if not, we'll get sweat. Swezzle will, you know, sneak us in somewhere. <laughs> um, How do we find you? Where can we find you? When can we find you? So I stream, I, I, my days change. I don't have like a set schedule, but I usually always stream four times a week on uh, at justin underscore nick on uh twitch i'm also on twitter but i have the most common name in the world so mm -hmm. i can never get the same name across all platforms so on twitter i'm uh justin underscore more and those are probably those are probably fine you'll find me everywhere else through those too so <laughs> click on those links yeah do you have a website to like where with all the links to everyone, for everyone no, to just like click definitely. that's something on the list of like the to-do list is like maybe have like a website that synthesizes everything but not yet nice and you're streaming tonight bug snacks I am. I'm streaming bug snacks tonight uh i'll probably start in the next 45 minutes probably there you go yeah have a drink and get uh yeah, yeah get relaxed 
Thank you again so, so much. Um, I'm going to stop the recording for the podcast. There we go. So it'll upload it. Um, uh, uploading right. There we go. Hide. <laughs> it's hiding you. Linktree. Yeah, that's the one that everybody I see yeah, use. I we do a Linktree. And let's go, let's go find someone to raid. Uh, who is who is a wonderful streamer? Oh, let's let's raid Sierra Mist. Yeah, after, we were just talking about Sierra. Yeah, we were just talking about Sierra, who did so much uh, so much work. Oh my gosh, yeah. Sierra really carried that. Like, they did an amazing job. Really? And oh, they're playing Watch Dogs Legion as well, which I played the other day, and I, I freaking love it. R.I.P. Uh, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> did you hear about lisa i did i heard through the grapevine about lisa <laughs> she uh she was somebody that you would cross the road to avoid uh she was as rough as a bag of rough as a badger's ass as we say and uh, she died <laughs> thanks to a drone but uh oh sierra okay sierra's on her uh, just put the beer back on but we'll go and go and spam a lot of love to sierra again justin thank you so much for no, everything it's that it was absolutely amazing and this is it's such a cool idea for a, a podcast doing this like uh microsoft flight simulator with it so. thank you yeah i can't wait to get the xbox series x because as soon as flight sim comes out on series x i'm gonna get that because my pc would then be able to actually you know run it smoothly <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. can't wait for that but and, and thanks so much to everyone in the chat sorry i had my the alerts and everything were all off um i've noticed that the the <laughs> image has gone off now but yeah all the alerts are off but i will at the beginning of next stream, thank you all again uh, for those who subbed, resubbed, raided, followed, everything like that. And oh, Sierra's back now. So there we go. Thank you. And I will see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. for an Animal Crossing stream. Still, PlayStation, got to wait till Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. See you, everybody. Okay, let me just end the stream.